Hey, what's good? Welcome into the Counter Mentors Podcast. We're excited. You know, our next few podcasts, we're going to be together. Yeah. This is, uh, for us, it just happens at the timing. We're the same place. Never happens. Today, I'm super pumped. You know, we've been talking about over the course of the last almost 30 episodes, which is mind-blowing, or we over 30. Yeah, 33 now. 33. Jeez. That's These clearly not the they detail. Learn, they don't learn how to count My anymore. point is, they we've been talking about the, our, our, our parents and, and the challenges, boomers, have brought us as millennials into the workplace, but they love to blame us, but it's their fault. So wait, 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 gonna, what, what, what's the title of the episode today? It's something about how terrible the parents are. Who raised these cupcakes? Well, clearly, yeah. he, clearly you know who, who, who writes the, uh, the titles. Anyway, we're going to get a lot into parents and episodes and, or, and what, what they did and how oh, we're creating man. like terrible episodes for us. Uh, and we're going well, uh, the, the complaining Lots of and the blaming begins. We'll see you on the other side. This is Counter Mentors with Kelly and Robbie Riggs. Finally, a place where you can get both perspectives on challenges in the workplace. From a boomer and a millennial. The Counter Mentor is the new leader. Join us as we show you how to blend the very best of both generations, young and old. This is Counter Mentors, and here are your hosts, Kelly and Robbie Riggs. Hey, welcome back. Kelly and Robbie Riggs, it's Counter Mentors. It's, uh, we do yet another contentious podcast. Well, that, that's, <laughs> that's, what, that's what makes it fun, anyway. Who raised these cupcakes? I, I, I did. He you, was, ado- he was adopted. Did. No, you were adopted. No, my yeah. little brother was adopted. Oh, yeah, that's the narrative at our house. Hey, thanks for joining us. You can find us on iTunes. We'd really love for you to go there if you don't already. Could you like the the page? Could you rate and review the page? That'd be fantastic because after all, if you're a millennial, you're out you know, riding your bike and working out, doing anything other than working. Yoga, so golf. you might yeah. as well be yeah. listening to our podcast uh, as you go along. Find us at countermentors.com, all of our past podcasts. Follow Robbie at Robbie Riggs, at Kelly Riggs, and of course, at Counter Mentors is the podcast. Listen, we get into some... I don't know, really serious kind of territory briefly. I mean, it's kind of unusual for us. But who raised these cupcakes? This came out, by the way, because a few weeks ago, I came across an article. It was actually printed in June, and and it had to do with Keyshawn Johnson. It did, yeah. So Keyshawn Johnson, for those of you who aren't big sports people, uh, Keyshawn was a heck of a receiver at uh, USC, then had a great career in the NFL. He was a legend in his own mind. In his own mind, yeah. But had a great career in the NFL with Tampa Bay, and I think he was with the Jets for a hot minute. I mean, he kind of bounced around towards the the end of his career. But it's finished up until his untimely, unseemly departure from ESPN. He'd been on ESPN for a long time. So, Man, you're throwing so that. Still, it's true. So still very much within uh, in, in the media and, and in things. And it really, really interesting article from Kentucky Sports Radio. Yeah, listen, I had the opportunity to meet Keyshawn Johnson yeah. briefly once. Yeah, but quotation marks. But I was, I was took in a, a selfie. <laughs> I, w- I was in Bristol and I was in a Marriott hotel there. I have a client, uh, I had a client at that time up in that area. And uh, I, I go in to eat in the hotel restaurant and there sh- sh- sits Keyshawn with a couple of his buddies. And so I just went up and said, hey, because I said, listen, my, my son would kill me if I didn't come up and say hello. Of course hello. I would, yeah. And uh, he's like, you know, get lost. I mean, <laughs> yeah, Lightly. Yeah. Lightly. I, I mean, he immediately was all up into those chicken wings and, you know, had yeah. no time for some guy to stop by and say hello. However... I've kind of changed my mind a little bit about Keyshawn. Here's why. KentuckySportsRadio.com. Keyshawn Johnson. By the way, find this on the show notes on our, on our website. Keyshawn Johnson pulls his son out of Nebraska and becomes father of the year candidate. I, I was shocked. I was, I was waiting for it to say, you know, his, his little cupcake son did something coach didn't like, and he went up there and started raising all kinds no, that, of No, that, that would be something Chris Collinsworth would do. Uh, or no, who, it was, was Collinsworth. Wasn't it? No, Texas Tech. It was yeah. uh, no. It's not. That. We'll, we'll we'll figure it out. But oh, no, it, it wasn't. Well, we didn't. Mean, we did not mean to denigrate Chris Collinsworth. That's what the. Yeah. Oh, hold on. He's, I'm not a Chris Collinsworth. Fan. We're not Chris Collinsworth fans, but uh, we we don't want to denigrate somebody that doesn't uh, deserve it. Anyway, so here here's this article. The four star wide receiver Keyshawn Johnson's son uh, came to Nebraska semester early, struggled during spring ball, made one catch for seven yards in the spring game, but it was his struggles off the field that made. Some headlines. Uh, it culminated in a <clears throat> marijuana possession citation in the dorm room. <laughs> Less than two weeks later, Keyshawn C- Sr., um, the guy we're not really big fans of. Yep. More so now, though, though we are. Made his son return home to California. Yanked him out of school. 
So get this, here, here's, the, here's what he wrote. One thing you will not do as my son is you will not embarrass Nebraska, you will not embarrass Mike Riley, and you will not embarrass this family, he told the Omaha World Herald. That's awesome. If you mature and you're ready to resume your football career and academic goals, then Nebraska will be ready to embrace you. Unbelievable. Uh, if, if you're not watching the video, that's my mouth hanging open because I, I was absolutely shocked. No, I mean, he's, it's, uh, you know, the, the opposite of this. Craig James is who we were thinking Craig about. James. So Craig James. Oh, it's had, not his son. No, had, had no. an incident in Texas Tech where he had had disciplinary, disciplinary, disciplinary. And then Craig James, of course, blamed Mike Leach, um, which also led to the firing of Mike, Mike Leach. Um, and it's the opposite of that. It, I'm not sure Mike's something, was blameless of that. Well, that's true. But, but <laughs> something happens here. Keyshawn has the opportunity to be the classic helicopter parent the classic, you know, oh, yeah. you know, boomer, uh, early ex parent, and say, "Not my kid's fault. It's got to be your fault." But instead, he says, "No, accountability, discipline." I mean, we were we were big fans. Of that. So, we are big fans. This article got us thinking. We we talk a lot on this show about the the role that our parents, millennials' parents, played in raising us and and yeah. creating a lot of these challenges. And we wanted to dig into it more because we think that, um, you know, we have a, a great friend of the show, Don, uh, one of our clients. Loves the show. He stops me in the office the other day, and he's like, Robbie, I'm sick and tired of you just blaming boomers for everything. And, no, no. What he said was blaming the pops for everything. Well, that, that's true. But, but the point is, Don, we're going to get to that episode later. Okay, Join us next week. We're going to talk a lot about uh, millennials. Actually, we're going to talk about fact or fiction. Yeah, millennials, millennials fact or fiction. going to be a ton of that's fun. That's next week. But we want to get time. into the, the, the reasons and the psychology behind why our parents, uh, in, in this case as millennials, why our parents are typically not like Keyshawn Johnson. Yeah, okay, so this is the point in the show where, by the way, you're going to have to pay me back. You're going to have to return a favor for a favor. But this is when I look at my son, the millennial, and I say, listen, <laughs> you're, you're, wow, this is You can do this. You can do this. Started, Deep breath. You're right. <laughs> oh, that hurt. Man. You're okay. Right. No, social hang on, media, let me say social you media, you can guarantee that's going to be all over this sound. Uh, you're right on this one thing. I mean, it's so rare, it's amazing, but this one minor thing, you're right. And that is that you turned out the way you turned out because I raised you so well. Yes, he's right about that. Robbie is an incredible human being, a great young man, successful in business because of his mom and dad. See? It's great to be right. Well, at least you said it. It is least, great to be right. No, you're right. At least you Hang on, said Let me repeat that. Least, social media, hashtag, I am right. Most people are listening to this it. show going, man, he must be a pain in the rear end to work with. Um, <laughs> well, at least, at least in, in that, that you said, you said be he it because of his mom and dad. Actually, right? here, here, okay, real enough, emphasis on Here's the mom. one more mea culpa. Yeah. Actually, it was all your mom. <laughs> I didn't do well, so it. Well, we want to talk about why this happened. You know, in the past in this show, we've gotten into – the, the how boomers were raised and being raised by the traditionalists um, and, and e even into the silent generation as either grandparents or uh, parents, th there was a real uh, void. It was kind of seen and be heard. You're, you're not talked to, you're not listened to, you don't, you know, get what you want, you get what you need. I mean, there, that was definitely that feeling from the boomer generation. Oh. So when boomers started having children, what do they say? I'm going to be the opposite of that. I'm Absolutely. going to be the opposite of my parents. Okay, I'm let me give you the mantra for my parents' generation. Yeah. Kids are to be seen and not heard. Yeah, that's exactly right. Everybody who's a boomer has heard that one, okay? Right. right. So we come along as parents and we're like, well, no, we're not going to treat our children like that. That's right. And, and, and coming from a place of love and a place of, I think, some emotional hurt that, that, that the, the boomer Potentially, generation sure. had. Potentially, sure. Absolutely. Uh, and they said, no, we want to make sure our kids feel loved and provided for and taken care of. Now- Unfortunately, that didn't he, keep your mom from making you do a lot of chores. Well, that, that's, again, that, that's, that's awesome. love. I have other scars from that. That's love. But, but the, the, the point is, there are <laughs> there's a whole generation now of, of parents that, remember, boomers, also the divorce generation. So for the first time, it became okay. The divorce was no longer taboo. Late so, boomers. Uh, that's what I mean, late boomers, yeah. so the, which is, are the ones who are over uh, raised millennials. Yes. So that was no longer taboo. So now you have two things competing. You have... Parents that are really wanting to give everything to their children, make them a the center of attention, and there's now this competition because, oh, well, dad got you that new bike. Well, I want to get you this, and, oh, by the way, I'm going to do this for you. So there became this competition where students or uh, millennials really were getting what they wanted, and, oh, by the way, everything about the parents' schedules were what? They were focused around – Yeah. The, the, the child, the millennial. Well, I mean, it, it, uh, listen, two parents working, always working, rush home from work, and mom suddenly is a taxi and yeah. dad's running around to activities. So if you got multiple kids, 
a lot of times what would happen though, dad is out traveling and working and he's not around and mom's doing just about everything and filling a lot of different roles. So, I mean, there's so many dynamics here, but what it ultimately culminated in some yeah. was this whole concept called helicopter parenting. Yeah. And it's where parents had to do everything to protect their children from everything. Because bad as boomers, you didn't get any of that. Like it was the opposite. You, you did fall and scrape your knee and, and pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. You didn't and wear a bike helmet. That, that's up. Yeah. That, that, that was, we a rode thing. in the back of the pickup truck sitting up on the side. Uh, well, I did too though. So what does that okay, say no, about don't, you? Don't, anyway, admit, don't admit that. So, but, but th this resulted in what we call hel helicopter parenting, parenting. Great article from psychology today. Uh, uh, this is from an article called the effects of helicopter parenting. Again, check the article uh, on in the, the show, show notes, on, in the yeah. show notes. Uh, the quote is, rest assured, children must struggle to grow and learn. Saving your children from consequences and challenges only ensures he or, sh he or she will face challenges down the road. More challenges. Right? Right. You're not preparing them. You're not preparing them. Yeah. Listen, <clears throat> little, little uh, philosophizing here. You know, back in the day when, when my generation was starting to learn how to parent, uh, parents were told, you've got to let your kids explore themselves. You've got to let them... Uh, eliminate the boundaries because that's constricting and constraining and it yeah. creates all kinds of problems and you know all of these kinds of issues so what happened is we've got all these kids that you know in math class two plus two is six and and the well, parents could be in little Johnny's head yeah yeah oh that's not we, we don't want to hurt his little feelings right. so the whole self-esteem movement blossomed and took a flight and it went nuts and so kids never learned how to be wrong they never learned how to fail they never learned how to pick themselves up and, and deal with issues and what we know now, psychologists say, maybe that wasn't the best idea we ever had. Yeah, we, we know it's presented a huge problem. You've heard us talk about this show previously about we as millennials have not developed psychological immunity, the, the ability to deal with struggle and heartache and challenges. This is where it Okay, comes so from. let me interpret. Most people may not understand the idea of psychological immunity. Just substitute the word cupcakes, okay? This is, this is where it comes from, little Johnny, not Robbie, but you know, little Johnny is a cupcake because he has no psychological immunity, right? He's never learned how to fail. He's never had anybody say, you can't do that. And then suddenly he gets to work and Mr. Boomer boss, old, old school supervisor's like, that's wrong. And then you guys have to go into your office and, and cry and put it on social media and write emails to all your friends about how bad your boss is. And is that not true? Somewhere that's psychologists are so agreeing with me they're agreeing just, with everything you, you i just, just tried said. to say psychological immunity is cupcakes and two minutes ago used the word philosophizing i you know it's really hard when i got you have that, an advanced I, I got degree that from my to, daughter to deal with she's a this. phd too you know? it's, it's, wait a minute what, what's your degree I'm, I'm embarrassed so la times article is helicopter parenting <laughs> ruining america's children now great interview here from julie lithcott haynes like julia or Julie, I apologize if I butcher your name there. But for the last 10 years, she's been the dean of incoming freshmen at Stanford. Yes. So really gets to see as these uh, uh, students are going from being at home, transitioning into college life, which is already a challenge for every generation. But she's seen the effects pops on yeah. millennials. Yeah, let me tell you what that transition looks like. We have a favorite word around our business. It's called train wreck, okay? <laughs> uh, here's what she said. I've been scolding other people for five or six years. One night I started cutting my 10-year-old son's meat, and I realized I was enabling dependence on me, which, which is fair. I mean, at four, five, and six, you're maybe teaching right. them how, yeah. but at 10, it gets silly. Right. I could see the link between parenting and why my college students, though very accomplished academically, were rather existentially impotent. That's a lot of big words in there. Yeah, he, he, you don't know what any of those. Words I have are. no idea, but but I so I asked somebody and they and they explained it to me. Basically, what it is is when when <laughs> when when you don't allow your children to act for themselves and make mistakes along the way, they become become completely dependent upon whomever is doing it all for them. Yeah. Listen, you come into the workplace, millennials. And my generation has been used to solving a lot of their own problems. You know, generally speaking, always exceptions. Yeah. But we've we've had to solve our own problems. Because you know what our parents did at 17? Get out. Get your crap and get out. Get your crap <laughs> and get out. Oh, by the way, here's 20 bucks for college. Go figure out how you're going to have a college degree, so, right? So Julie continues this article and says, Boomer started this. Gen X as parents are really taking it up. And now millennials as parent, parents are doing the same thing. And we're doubling down in a lot of ways making it that much worse. Although there is this little uh, revolt, this small group of, of uh, millennials are going, hold on, this isn't right for our kids. But she says this, 
This happens because presumably there are short-term wins. And there are. When, when you micromanage your kids every moment, she says, you achieve good outcomes. Wow. Doesn't this sound like Taylorian management? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Look, here's the point. The same – gosh, this is going to really crush me. The same parents who raised the cupcakes – by stepping in front of them and doing everything and solving all their problems and making all their decisions and immunizing them against any kind of failure and the consequences right. of failure, yep. they're doing the exact same stuff at work. Right. They're stepping in front of their employees. They're making all of their decisions. They're practicing that Taylorian management style that never allows their people to develop or grow or become independent. And they're scratching their heads and wondering why it's not working out. Well, and, and as millennials are coming into the workplace, they're truly not... They, they don't know how to take criticism, to uh, follow up on things, to push back in a productive, healthy way. And so that results in small-minded people calling them cupcakes. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Cupcakes. Small-minded? I, I mean, I went there. Okay. Philosophizing. Psych I was just philosophizing. <laughs> Great. Psychologically dependent is just a fancy way of saying Snowflake. I, I, I think I'll this I, cupcake is harsh. Now let's. I'm sorry. Is that hurting your feelings? It really let's is. Let's go I, with snowflake. I'm, I'm really upset about it. Now let's talk about how this is actually impacting <laughs> the real world. So okay, this is my we, favorite. Article. When we think about, on, I got to take this. When one. we think about, millennials are now the largest consumer group in in, 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 the, in the market. By the way, place. biggest demo in marketing. Yep. is, is 26 year olds. It followed followed by 25 year olds, 27 year olds, and 24 year olds. Exactly. So late 20s is now the biggest demo for a lot of people. So there's this really enormously cool article in Wall Street Journal. Yep, yep. One like, of my favorites. Like, big, big plan, yeah, like a couple of days ago, I, I'm yeah. in a hotel in Atlanta, yeah. and I pick up the Wall Street Journal, and right there on the front page, okay. below the front. <laughs> Let's be clear. You picked up, look at the picture. Was it like a cool picture on the front? Because like, you know, I mean, you don't read. It was. Yeah, okay. All right. I barely read. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. Says, says the millennial who struggles. Okay. <laughs> All right. So here's what it said. Love this. Scott's Miracle Grow, that company, has started a campaign to, to, to reach millennials because that's their biggest demo. You know what I mean? Course. It could be yeah. if they reached them. So what they had to do is to begin to teach them the very basics of gardening. Well, let's take now, a step back. The reason they weren't reaching them is because millennials didn't know how to garden. Yeah, right. So they don't know yeah. how to garden. A lot of them. Now, again, big bell curve, right. the ones in the middle don't know how. So that what they realized very quickly is they thought they would go you know, directly to soil composition and types of plants and all that. No, they had to step back about six paces and say, very, very basic, like making sure that your plants have sunlight. Yeah, and water. Yeah, these are important things. Bless your little heart, you poor kids. Here, here's the quote from the article because, again, <laughs> not our fault. Oh, this please. generation with its you guys overscheduled don't. childhoods, tech dependent <laughs> lifestyles, and delayed adulthood uh. is radically different than previous ones. They grew up playing soccer, having dantricidals, and playing, playing Xbox, Xbox, not weeding the garden. Whose fault is that? Wait a minute. Did you realize what you just said? That they realize that you guys have uh, delayed adulthood. Man, 20, 26 yeah. year old. Yeah, yeah. And hot, you're, not, you're not an adult yet. Hot take. Yeah, wow. Let's see. At 16, hmm, you can drive. Take. At 18, you can drink. And, 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 and serve well, your wow. country. No, you can't. <laughs> at 18, you can't drink. 21. How old are you? <laughs> like 90. <laughs> At 18, you can pick up a gun and serve the country. Oh, at 21, 21 you can drink. can drink. Okay. But you're not an adult yet at 26 because you don't know you need freaking sunlight. For your I love that we're saying delaying adulthood because this generation is choosing oh, not to make the mistake shoot. of our parents and our parents' parents oh. getting married okay. at 18, boomer, getting boomer divorced. Boomer managers. Yeah, boomer uh, managers, I feel your pain. I deal with this every day. He never takes responsibility. He doesn't say, hey, dad, it didn't go as well as I would have liked uh, in my childhood. I'm going to grow up. But I'm going to wait till I'm 40, but I'm going to grow. That's you know, how psychologically say. stunted you made me. I, I, I'm, I'm wait a minute. I already, I already admitted your mother did all the raising, so it's not my fault. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so, so because, okay, so let, let's think about this. As parents, you were too busy because um, you were working, both parents working, or divorced, both parents had to work. Yeah, theoretically, um, yes. Yeah, so it, again, we saw huge, huge swings in terms of parents, you know, tradition, quote unquote, traditional household, mom stayed home, dad worked. That really started to swing the other direction. So that resulted in um, also, uh, on top of all these other things, a lot of time in front of the television, a lot of time video games, this article references that. Right. What do we think the impact was that on us? I mean, we, we hear a lot about millennials struggling with uh, interactions or wanting to do things on their own terms. Do you think that the, you know, you putting us down with the TV dinner in front of the TV and saying, 
you know, that, that's your entertainment. I mean, how did that impact us? Yeah, I, you know, here, here's the sad part about it. Boomers, why, you, you may be asking yourself, okay, this is a little bit entertaining watching Robbie and I go at it, but why did we even bring this episode up? It's because as a boomer manager, and even as a millennial manager, if you've jumped into leadership now, you have to understand why people are the way they are and what got them there mm -hmm. so that you can adequately connect with them. There's some real challenges that are involved. There's an article from Time that was recently published called, We Need to Talk About Kids and Smartphones. And I would suggest to you that one of the things that, that parents have begun to do in the last 10 years is the minute that kid is old enough to hold an iPad or a, a smartphone. Which is at eight, 18 months. 18 months. I mean, they've got that in front of them and, and it's keeping them occupied, which right. means they're not building a human connection with their kids. They're using right. electronics as their babysitter. Right. Here's the problem with that. Between 2010 and 2016, according to this article, the number of adolescents who experienced at least one major depressive episode increased by, get ready for this, 60%. They researched 17,000 kids, at least 13% have had a major depressive episode. And they're beginning to tie this to the fact that the lack of human connection, you know, they're the most... Millennials and, and Gen Z are the most socially connected people on the planet, but they're the most socially isolated people. I was going to say, we, we say that, and that's a great soundbite, but we know they're really not. I mean, they, they are socially isolated. I mean, they, I, I totally agree with what you yeah, said. To, they, yeah, they're really not socially connected. Right, right. They, they, they are. They have the appearance yeah, of being connected, yeah, yeah. right, but they're completely socially isolated. So they come into the workplace, and listen, if you're listening and you're screaming, that's not me, you're a millennial Gen Z, that's not me, it probably has a lot to do with the way you're raised. Maybe not every time, but... A, a lot of who we are as people is completely dependent upon the way we were raised, that environment. Did you have two parents or just one? Blended family or not? Were you raised urban or rural? You know, what, what were the ideas and attitudes of your parents? All that really filters down to you. And what we're trying to say, Boomer Managers, is you want to put everything into one box. It's the way I was raised, the way I do it, and right. you should do it the way I do it. Right. And that's just not an effective no, way to and, develop people. And, and I think I would disagree with what you said in that, I wouldn't say it's completely because of. I, I would say that Huge part. all of that, the, 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 your nature plays a big part of it. Your nurture plays a big part of it. Sure. But, sure. but also the environment that you're in when you are going into adulthood. So, uh, you know, we talk a lot about this. Um, you know, we spend a lot of time with young university students mentoring and coaching them. And I think that it's really important that they get the, in, in the right environment once they get into university and into that first job. That, that's a key time in their lives as well. So I wouldn't say it's completely dependent, but it, it, well, it, all nature the, and nurture play a big role. Yeah, no, and, and, I, and I actually just kind of said that the wrong way. What I'm saying is it definitely plays oh, a, a significant right, role. Right, so right. it's completely dependent in the sense that you can't get away from your raising, yeah, so, your upbringing, all that. So this is going to be uh, shocking to a lot of people who listen to the show. But my hot take on this is our millennials need to own this. I, we, we need to stop blaming our parents for the, the challenges that we're facing. D did your parents screw you up, uh, generally speaking? Yeah, but Probably. you know what? Sure. Every generation's parents freaking screwed them up. You got to get over it. You got you. You have to move on. You have to own your crap and know that I need to move forward despite these things. I need to be a better listener. I need to take criticism better. I need to understand that it doesn't all uh, re revolve and evolve because of me and at my pace. So if you're a millennial listening to the show and, and you are, you're, you're like, yeah, Robbie, it's all our parents. Fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. Wrong take. But you got to get over it. <laughs> you have to. No, you know, the first step towards buying in and owning it is being aware. You're now aware, but you got it. You got to pivot. Absolutely. By, by the way, as an aside, uh, Robbie and I have finished, and we've said it a couple of times in our shows, we finished our new book, Counter Mentor Leadership, How to Unlock the Potential oh, of Four Generations we just, Place. We just approved the cover. Just of the approved jacket. the cover. Cover is awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Allison Hankey, for uh, all of your work as our editor. But uh, they complained a little bit about your use, your pervasive use of the word crap. Well, it's because I couldn't use other four-letter words. I was trying to keep it clean. I was trying to keep it clean. My son does not talk that way. He never learned that from his mother. His mother watches these, so we just need yeah. to know he can blame it on someone else. Listen, here, here's what they said uh, in, in this article before we get away from it. How helicopter parenting is ruining America's children. Boomers started this. Gen X has taken it up. Presumably, there are short-term wins. Robbie mentioned this. But when you micromanage your kids every moment, you may achieve good outcomes, but there's just this – terrible long-term cost. What Robbie's suggesting is you need to understand it. Listen, you know what? Robbie makes a good point. I mean, our parents screwed up us boomers as well, and their parents screwed them up and, you know, ad nauseum. So it all rolls downhill. Every generation looks at the new generation and says, oh, these kids don't get it. Back, going back to Socrates. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> they, they, they said the same thing yeah. about my generation. These yeah. young kids are, are, are running, you know, workplace and 
ruining the world and we're going to be the death of everything. Let's, what you're trying to do is become a better leader in the workplace. What you need to do is build that relationship with somebody you don't understand, learn to own that relationship and understand their perspective. And that way you can really get to the point where you can make a difference. Hot take for me is, hey boomers, you got to open up your thought process and realize these kids are not like you. Okay, we get it. But the, the reality is they have tremendous amount of potential and knowledge and and skills that, by the way, you don't have because they're going, you, you can't even but operate Boomer, a smartphone. You, you have to seek first to understand. I mean, yeah, millennials got to own Did it, make but, but, but Boomer, you have to own it. You're the leader. You, you are responsible for developing and growing that individual. Yes. And if you are making excuses about, well, they just don't get it, they're different, then shame on you. Yeah. And, and you, frankly, will not last in this chaotic four-generation workplace. That they're retiring at the rate of how many? 10,000 a day. 10,000 a day. Yeah. By the way, seek first to understand, way back to Stephen Covey in the mid-80s, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, one of the great books of all time for anybody to read. Millennials, uh, I know you, you probably don't read well, but maybe there's a podcast for us. Wow, that was uh, uh, scary to the world. And it's downright rude. So that's it. That, that, that's all we got for you. <laughs> Thanks for joining us on this episode. Who raised these cupcakes? Episode 33. Really enjoyed it. Make sure you check us out online. Go see our show notes, countermeters.com. Click on the episode tab. We're excited. Next week, we're going to talk about millennials, back for fiction. It's going to be a ton of fun. For the awesome. pops, it's gonna be follow good. on Twitter, at Kelly Riggs. I'm your boy, Rob. We'll see you next time. All right. Be good. Thanks for tuning into Counter Mentors with Kelly and Robbie Riggs. For more information about the show, to listen to past shows, or to learn more about how Kelly and Robbie teach companies the counter mentoring process, visit countermentors.com. The Counter Mentors Show is presented by One on One Media, Incorporated. All rights reserved. Opinions expressed by guests on the show may not be the opinions of One on One Media or the host of the Counter Mentors Show.